if you are a solopreneur looking forward to launching your app on the play store or on the app store it's it's a thing i mean you can get really really tired and exhausted with all the how to build up ideas out there especially if you're building with no code and you're using a tool like flutterflow to build your mobile application so you there are lots of tutorials out there telling you how to do it and what not to do, right? So this is a five step straight, you know, click card tutorial on how you should launch your first application. If you're a newbie solo, uh, solopreneur, if you're a newbie solopreneur and you're just, you just want to, you know, build an idea and you want to launch it into the market, right? You know, I'm a Flutterflow dev myself and I've worked on a whole lot of application um, over the past, you know, few months, you know, since I started using and teaching Flutterflow. And I figured that if you follow this five step, you will definitely be able to launch your application as a solopreneur in, you know, in a, in a reasonable period, period of time, right? So the first thing first that you want to do, right, is to have a clear goal in mind right? You have to set a foundation on this one. You have to think for yourself and you have to ask yourself, what kind of app do I want to build? You know, I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs come around and they say they want to build their video, they want to build their application, but they just keep on going, keep on adding features, keep on adding features. But there is no clear going in mind and say, hey, this is are the features I want and this is how I intend to launch my application. So you don't want to fall into that route because a an application can have as many screens. You can see these are tons and tons and tons and tons of screens, lots of screens like this. You can have a whole lot of screens. You can have a hundred screens. You can have 200 screens. It depends on the type of application you're creating, but you can you might end up creating so many different pages and you do not know where to stop. So um, if you are a solopreneur who's just getting started, set a foundation and decide on what you want to build, then you go ahead and list the feature, right? That will enable you to build that particular thing. And so you, you know where you are. So a problem, a problem is you knowing how the ad was, what you need to do and how you want it to become, right? So for example, so a problem is you knowing um, the pro what is wrong, what you will do, and the end result. So you need to know when you get to the end result so you can stop and launch it to your customer, right? It's like saying, oh, the earth is very, the earth was flat. We did an experiment. We figured things out. Now the earth is spherical. So you really have to understand where you are, what you need to do, and where you want to end up. If not, you will keep on working and working and working for a very long time and you won't be able to stop right number two number two things that you want to know you want to understand how to build interfaces right you you want to have a basic knowledge on how interface look like you know just opening flutter flow and jumping like this right can be really can be really hard you know just naming your pages and just saying okay i'm going to create a home page because flutterflow gives you an empty canvas to work with it can be really really hard saying oh where do i start from do i start with changing the colors do i start with um uh, looking how it's going to look like on different screens. Do I start with uh, um, dark screen or light mode? So these are things that you really want to think about, right? You want to think about them. How exactly is my interface going to look like? Is it going to be cool? Is it going to be very trendy? So your target audience definitely will determine how your interface will look like so one of the sites i think you can go to find design inspiration is uh mobin right mobin is the world largest mobile and web design they say that's what they say who they say they are if you come to mobin you can discover a whole lot right you can see different interface right from wallet to subscription login you'll find different interfaces from different uh mobile application that you use and you'll be able to 
find some of them that reasonably work with you. You know, I'm not saying that you should go ahead and copy these apps word for word, but you see, these apps, right? They are they were created. They've been created by professionals, right? By very expensive professionals, people who are hired to do all of these things daily. And so you can come back here. You can see screens. You can see UI elements. You can see flows like searching, listening to audio, adding to cart. You can see many things. You can see screenshots, you know, lots of them. And so you can get design inspiration to use in your own application. Another place where you can find this is Pinterest. You can, you can find, you can have a keyword, you know, let's imagine you're designing a real estate application. You know, you can find a keyword, right? Real estate iOS app. And those keywords will show you some screens that you need, right? You would see a whole lot of screens here. The good thing about Pinterest is that you don't really have to pay. For Mobin, you have to subscribe. And though pretty affordable, but you have to subscribe. It says um, quarterly, $15 a month, $10 a month, but you have to subscribe in order for you to assess it and, you know, see all the collections. But here, Pinterest, you don't really have to. But the difference between Mobin and Pinterest is that on Pinterest, you might not really see everything. But on Mobin, on Mobin you would see all everything and get very cool inspiration. But if you're not going to check out Pinterest and you're not going to check out Mobin, a good place to also start is to find a competitive app. Like, for example, we were building, um, I, 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 we, I, I, I'm a team lead for the development studio here and it's called our design studio so when we're building apps for for a, a company for a solopreneur or for a startup so what we do there's this phase and it's called the discovery phase so during the discovery phase before we even think of how the application is going to look like we do competitive analysis. So it's something that you should also do for yourself too. You take similar applications, you take similar applications in different industries and take a look at it, you know, take a look at it, especially those applications from the key leaders in your industry. Take a look at it and see what it means. See how they are placing it, how the user experience look like, how the user interface. That will give you a whole lot of inspiration how your interface should look like. Right. So the next thing you want to do, you want to make your you want to make your database choice. It's very important. It's a it's one of those things that you can shy away from as a solopreneur who just want to launch their dream into the market. You want to build incrementally. That's the reason why you have to make a very cool database choice. So for us, it's either Superbase or Firebase. Right. Both of these applications are very good. Both of the both both of these backend services are very, very good, but you have to learn about it, right? If you're just, you know, getting started, you would find resource on Superbase and Firebase in my channel. Feel free to check it out. Um there are videos where I compared both of these. I've covered this before, so you can check it out. So you have to think of how your database is going to look like. Am I going to, what kind of database? Am I going to host it here? Am I going to host it on Firebase? Or am I going to use a different third party? Because one thing about Flutterflow, Flutterflow allows you to use third party application. Or Flutterflow allows you to use third party application. But for Superbase and Firebase, it comes directly with it. So you can use Superbase directly with Flutterflow and you can use Firebase directly, but you can use any other third party application that you want to have. And for a lot of persons who have applications hosted somewhere else, right? It's hosted somewhere else. So you can, you know, build the mobile version of the application on Flutterflow without really breaking the bank. Number four, you have to test, test free time. You know, I've seen, um, so back then when we started our studio, the way we were building applications that we build from start to, you know, we build, we hit a milestone before we begin to test. No, you don't do it like that. If you did it like that, you're going to spend a whole lot of time testing. You might have done development for four weeks and then you end up testing for another four weeks because you're trying to, um, you're trying to test unit by unit, you know, you're trying to do page by page testing and that's not going to be very very good right this is not user testing so i'm talking about testing your application internally so what you want to do and this is something that i've seen work for us you want to as you build you want to run and test and in order for you to do that you can't really 
depend on the Flutter Flow interface. For the, you can't really depend on the uh, tests that Flutter Flow provides for you. But what you want to do is that you want to um, download Flutter Flow Desktop. Right, you can have if you have to use the iOS, you can download it the one for MacBook. If you use uh, Windows, you can download the one for Windows. And you want to set up S Gold if you're using Mac, or you want to set up Android Studio if you're using Windows. And then you can test directly. It's faster. It, it's easier for you to do so. It might be. It might take you a while, maybe like an hour to set up S Gold or to set up Android Studio. It might take you an hour because you have to download raw file. So it depends on your internet connection. It might take you. 15 minutes to one hour depending on your, your internet connection to download all the files that's needed but once you have it you can really test read time so you test read time and you see how your app is going read time you know you test your authentication test your payment test most of the things that you want to present to your users so you don't have to worry you know after creating all of this so that's how we build it, and that's how i think you should also build and lastly Step five, what you have to do now is to launch, right? If you're comfortable, you've built your interface, you've tested, you think your app is working, don't beat around the bush too much. Go ahead, put it on the Play Store and start getting user, reuser feedback. Launch as fast as possible. And one thing that we also advise uh, clients that we work with, don't build all the features in one go. If you have 20 features, you have 10 features, don't choke your intended users with features. Launch launch a few features one single feature especially that you think your customers need in order to solve the problem right launching a feature put it on the play store on the ios store or any other independent store that you use launch as fast as possible and start getting customer feedback then you can incrementally right you can incrementally keep um, adding features to your application right let me give you a bonus when you're building your your you're launching your idea your app idea with Flutter Flow, always use components to build instead of building everything page by page, right? So I can show you everything on this app because it's a it's an app that I'm working on, so I can show you everything. But if you look at this, you would see we use the whole lot of components. You can see the number of components is way more than the number of pages. So you want to use components. Components are faster. It's easy for you to reuse among multiple pages. It allows you to... Um, build incrementally it allows you to build dry so you like dry means don't repeat yourself so you don't have to repeat yourself so if you have like um if you may, let's say you're creating an app that allows you just to create a post edit a post right you can build one single component that single component can create a post and that single component can edit a post just one component but if you don't want to build it dry you would have to build two pages one page but to create the post another page to edit the post that would mean that your uh your app will be a lot more heavier because of how many pages you're creating yeah you go that's how i personally will build my flutter flow app in five simple steps i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think about it if you have any additional step leave it in the comment section i'll do well to check it out thank you very much for watching i'll see you in a different tutorial entirely till then keep building